Alright, g'day guys, Matt Preston, Bill Prado. Welcome to another video. Very excited, because as you can see right next to me by the title, we've got the brand new Sanhima rooftop tent Gen 2, okay guys? So this has only been out for a short while. On the Facebook group, so many people have been saying, oh, like, how is this tent, what's it like? No one's actually done a video yet, so this will be the first video on YouTube about how to install it, what's it like, and is it worth your money? I can, when you're throwing this away, you can use this to protect it. Oh, there it is. Gotta say, there's a lot of uh, foam paneling here on the side, which is probably a good thing, you know, to uh, protect the uh, external gas traps here on the outside. Hey guys, so it's fully unboxed. As you can see, you know, it's quite big, but they all are. So this tent is 2.2 meters long and it's 1340 wide, okay? So 1.34 wide. So there's your dimensions. And then like I said before, on the website it says 230 mil thick, but I think they're also including the tiny, tiny crossbar down there. Um, but the actual body, which is what you sort of see with your eyes, it's 180, okay guys, which is really good size. And I will also say the finish on this it feels like Raptor, to be honest. It's it's quite rough, and it's not like a smooth, it's got like a shiny finish which looks nice, but it's a really rough sort of rugged material. It's not like a glossy paint. Okay guys, some fun facts for you. So this weighs 70 kilos, which is actually more on the light end with rooftop tents. For example, the King's Grand Tour rooftop tent, that actually weighs 90 kilos. So that's an extra 15 kilos on top of this, which you will notice on the roof. But to be fair, it is wider, longer and taller so it's bigger in all the other categories and the mattress is thicker but this one has a 65 mil high density foam mattress okay guys which is plenty enough for me uh maybe if i was a bit older don't want to be uncomfortable i'd maybe get a little bit bigger well it's pretty tall okay so when you first open your tent this is what it will look like now in here you can already see we've got the Big telescopic ladder, um, which is all black, which looks really nice. It's not like a silver look. And we've got some of our roof bars here. And then here, we've got some shoe bags. So you get two of those. Also this little box here, which has lots of mounting hardware, as you can see. So this has got, you know, all sorts of bolts, hinges, rubbers, everything we'll need to install this properly. And it's got some big roof bars that we're going to need the roof. Then it also has this little bag which I'm assuming you'll put any sort of miscellaneous pegs and stuff in there even though you want to take it down. Now this is pretty cool, so there's this huge bar that you can see goes around here and it's got that little light strip on it. Now, now this isn't fixed, um, this gets installed, but USB, USB RAN and it's got a little on and off button here and that's really cool because that's going to give us LEDs inside the tent. And there's also this spot up here which obviously you can put your phone or just little books or anything that you need to put up there for storage. There's two big black uh, rail bars here as well. Now these will be for the roof rack uh, that goes on top of the tent. Pretty solid ladder here, far out. It's actually um, it's a little bit heavier than I thought it would be, but I guess you'd want that if you want to be walking on it day in day out. Now there's one thing I do know about these ladders, at the very least, is that a lot of companies now, they've been putting slants on the steps, um, but these, to me, don't look very slanted. These just kind of look flat. Which is fine, it just means when you walk up in your tent, unless you've got really strong feet, um, it's just going to hurt quite a bit. So you might want thongs at least, just to climb up and down. But some other companies, they have a slight slant on the step. So these little brackets here, um, these are for the ladder to hook on. But this little bar here that comes in the plastic bag, this will actually go at the top there, and you use it to just pull it down at the end when you're closing it up. So that's what that's for. Okay, so that big pole, you simply slide it in these slots down here, and then both clip in and then you just push it up like this and it will sort of start pushing back and then you can see here there's a pole up here with the velcro strap you undo that grab that end and clip it into there and then it will create this sort of massive frame looking thing and it's just gonna look really cool 
and also give you 30% extra space. Okay guys, so I figured while it's on the table here, I might as well put the roof bars on because doing it up on the car would be a mission. Um, so it's pretty straightforward. You get four of these brackets uh, and it's got two holes at the bottom, one at the top and the two holes at the bottom will be the ones that go into the channel of the tent and the one bolt will be for the bar itself, okay? So it goes like this. And then on the rail itself, uh, you might be able to see there, the top is actually wider than the bottom. Uh, you want that to be at the top. Um, and then it comes in a little bag in that little cardboard box with multiple um, heads and the little slide-in bits that will go down in the rails. So I've got four, it's like four bolts and four of those slide-in bolts for each side, okay guys? So that's gonna be eight all up, eight and eight. And then it also comes with these little plastic caps which just go on the end of these, making it look nice and finishing it off so you don't get sharp edges down the, on the end of the aluminium. So you'll find four of these bolts with the washers in and then four of these nylon nuts and they simply just slide in the rail like this. Cap goes on the end and then these will sit on top of your little brackets that you put here. So I've had this tent for a few months now and I've been keeping it multiple times and I'm just going to show the ins and outs and features of it. Now we've been over them uh, briefly in the unboxing but now I've actually had some experience and a few nights in this bad boy that would actually go through it properly. So we're going to get up there, run through all the pros and cons of it. Okay now I'm not going to lie to you guys, uh, this is my first rooftop tent sort of experience. Now getting used to the hole, you know, play some max tracks under the wheel so you get the right level and obviously having your head on the top end of the bed so when you go down you don't, you know, get I don't know, blood rush to your brain or whatever. So um, this is the way we decide to set it out. Um, ladder goes on our driver's side and we remove the max tracks and the ladder just looks on there really nicely. Um, right now I've got 32s on, but when I have 35s on, um, it also does work with the angle, which is what I was worried about. But the ladder can't go over the back with the spare because it's too big. So if you have a Prado 90 series and you get one of these, just something to watch out for. Even the Pajeros, if you have tires on the back, um, you can't really get your ladder on the back unless you've um, like take, opened the door up like I have here. So I just thought I'd run you through the shoe bag. Now this I wasn't too excited about. Like putting your shoes in this like sort of material in the rain isn't really going to work. But I can confirm after camping three nights in winter, it does work. Um, it does feel a little bit thin but it actually does work. And it's big enough to get two sets of shoes in. So I've got, you know, size 13 feet. My big shoes fit in here and also the misses as well. And then this little flap just goes over and little velcro straps and it actually does the job. I'm very impressed. Okay guys, straight out of the back here. Now, I just thought I'd run through some little features on this. So it's got this second layer cover here, which is obviously good for water protection. Um, and it's got these adjustable straps so you can pull them up and down and get that nice and tight. And on the top, it's got a clear plastic section. So if you undo the zip on the inside, you can look up through the sky. Now, that's really cool because most rooftop tents don't have this second bit and it's not even possible because you can't zip a hole through the hard shell. So that's a good feature of this one. And also like it how it doesn't have any awning flappy shades that come out with the big two meter bendy poles. I just think they look a bit weird and they're kind of cumbersome. Whereas this to me looks like a nice sort of sharp modern box on the roof and I already like it. Now, if you're wondering what this handle is, this is for when you close it, you actually can pull on this and you can get it a bit lower and then do it again. But I sometimes just <laughs> chuck it up there out of the way. <laughs> don't need that. So last night there was a little bit of rain um, and we just had a tiny bit of condensation uh, up in here, but it also could have potentially been just our breath in the air. Um, but as you can see here, there's drops still up here, um, but none of that can get through. Um, and this little light is a nice little section, nice little cutout. Um, and then yeah, you can obviously just zip this up whenever you want. And then all these little poles here, as you can see, they just clip on and then they're adjustable. So they're very easy to use. And then they just, they sit on this Velcro strap which is just back there. And that's how they hold up in transport mode. Now the pockets, we've already used them. Um, just put socks and random items like that in there. And then at the very end, you got those two pockets there. Uh, I've been putting my phone in there. So had a few nights at both ends of the tent. Now we originally slept on this side of the tent where the bit folds out and it's quite high. 
uh, cause we didn't want the, the board like kind of right on our face. And the sleep actually was pretty average and we didn't really like it too much. So this camp now we're currently on, last night we just slept on that side and we had our head against the edge here on the front side of the car and it was actually pretty good. Now, I'm not gonna lie to you, there's a few times where we sort of leant up and we hit our head because it's literally like an inch off your head. But in saying that, because it's got this like soft padded material, it actually doesn't hurt at all. Now, I'm probably not selling it enough, but it was way better to sleep on this end and having sort of the, the dip part near your face. And also I think it's a little bit warmer for my head, I was noticing because there's less like room for cold air to be. So feet on this end and head on that end was the best result for us. Another thing to mention is it felt like we had more room in the tent because when we're sleeping, you sort of look up, you, you can see this whole side of the tent. So it just felt like a lot bigger um, and more spacious. Whereas the other way you're kind of staring into the, to the hard shell. But to be fair, if you want to watch movies or anything on your phone, um, you can put them in these pockets here. So it kind of is good to watch movies that way at least and then flip around the other way for bed. Um, and I also say, um, the little light in here has been very handy. You just get a little power bank, just a tiny one, and USB charged, and you just chuck that in, touch, and it does amber and white. Um, amber one's really nice, not too bright, and butts up plenty of space in here, so I think that's pretty good that that's in here as well. They've thought about that, and I'm glad they just haven't put no lights in here at all, because then you'd just be using a phone torch. So remember, another great thing about this tent, it's 30% bigger than the Gen 1. So this is the Gen 2, I'll put a foot up on screen, you can see that this whole back section that folds out is that extra 30%. Now, also because of that, the actual door openings are way bigger. Now this is good for a few reasons. One, getting in and out the tent, you could actually have like almost two, even three people sit sideways across it and have your legs dangle out because it's that wide. And also it means the windows are bigger because that means you've got more of a fly net, which means, you know, more airflow, okay? So a lot of advantages to this. And also the old one's white and I just feel like it didn't look very nice. Whereas this is a dark gray and black combination. I just think it looks really good together. Okay guys, so in this one video, we've done an unboxing and we've done a review and we've sort of done like a one, two month review of the tent. So the Sanhima uh, Kalbari Gen 2 rooftop tent. Hope that sort of gives you a bit of knowledge and insight in case you want to get one yourself. If you're depending between this one and the Gen 1, you don't know which one to get. Um, I'd probably lean more towards this one as it's got a lot more space uh, and it looks a lot more sleek as well, okay? So I really hope this helps you out guys. And if you want to share it with your friends, share the video around, like and subscribe. If you want to get one of these yourself, uh, link will be in the description, go on their website and you'll be directed straight away there. And they do free shipping Australia wide. So you can get this to your front door um, and install it like I have. So hope this is helpful. If you have any questions, put them in the description and I'll try and read them and see if I can help you out. Um, but I absolutely love it, highly recommend. And we'll see you guys next time on Built Prado.